What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Dead on Day Productions, and welcome to your five-minute focus of the day. I was going to do a full, full-blown raw review with the great Ed Crowley, but I'm already going to be doing something else with him this week. So don't worry, Ed. We're going to do something this week. But the fact is, I did a raw review with Cronin last night on the Joe Cronin show, and honestly, you know, I look. Joe Cronin went absolutely fucking crazy on Raw, and he had every right to do it. Uh, I didn't think Raw was that bad. Uh, I thought it was in some. There was some good. The first hour, let me say that the first hour I thought was not terrible. Let me fix my hand. First hour I thought was not horrid, and then it quickly got really terrible until the ending. And I liked the chaos at the end. I thought that was kind of cool. It was interesting, but other than that, it was a, a kind of a bad Raw. But what I want to do is. I kind of want to finish what I started with Joe Cronin on the after show, which you can find on Joe Cronin show, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the other show, the main raw review was done on Spectrum Gaming six six one seven due to his ban to his other channel, so he can't do live videos. Uh, but we did an after show for about eleven minutes, and it was really funny. I thought it was really good. I got to go over my copious amounts of notes, uh, and I got about halfway through. So I wanted to kind of talk about that. Uh, just a few things I wanted to highlight from the show that stood out to me. And then I'll get you out of here really quick. That's why I didn't bring in Crowley. Because his talents are just far too good and vast to use on such a trifle matter. So um, let's just talk about a few things. One, Seth Green has no business ever hosting another Raw event or another WWE event. I like Seth Green. I like Robot Chicken. I like things that he does. But... You know, he just seems so out of place, and he's so little tiny. And he's got 15 years on Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins called him kid, which I thought was hysterical because he's so small. Um, I think New Day is uh, going in the right direction. I'm enjoying everything that the New Day is doing uh, pretty much, and I don't even know why. I can't even tell you why. I think the potential is there for something good. I think it could be a good faction. Um, even though I do firmly believe it's going to just be a vehicle to propel Big E Langston because I think he's the only one of the three they really do care about. The Ultimate Warrior winning surprise return of the year, even though the Warrior was not a surprise return, I was okay with it because of the emotion evolved in it. Uh, of the three nominees, The Rock was the only one that was a legitimate surprise return, and it probably should have won because it was actually shocking and no one saw it coming. But how, how can anybody argue with the Ultimate Warrior winning, especially in the vignette for his nomination? They, they played the most heart-wrenching portions of his final promo. and So I'm okay with it. I think most people are, unless you're a heartless fuck. Which, that's okay if you're a heartless fuck. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I got my kid right here. Probably shouldn't be saying heartless fuck. I, I apologize. No, she See, my kid's awesome. She just zones it out. Doesn't even hear. Fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck, fuck. She doesn't even care. It's great. She's playing a tablet. Millennials. I don't know if that... I don't even know. Uh, Heyman, once again, shows how great he is. My God, every time he talks, it's fantastic. Uh, the Charlotte thing was, is something of high contention. Uh, a lot of people, such as myself, when they first saw Charlotte, was just excited because we've been waiting for her for so long, and I'm in that category. I was so enthralled to see her uh, on Raw because she has such a, an amazing presence, just like her dad did in, in the 80s. Ric Flair had this presence about him, even when he wasn't in a suit. When he was in the ring, he was quite imposing. Yeah, he wasn't the biggest guy in the world, but he was wide-chested, and he, you know he looked like he was going to put on a show. And Charlotte's the same way. She makes the same facial expressions. She holds herself the same way. I really enjoy watching her work. I enjoyed her so much that I didn't even really bother to getting into the, uh, the subject matter of the match itself, which was not great, mainly because I have to agree with Joe Cronin. 
she shouldn't have lost that way. It shouldn't have been a roll up. It should they should have made it feel bigger. And Natalia is good enough to where it could have been bigger. I've seen good matches between the two, and I thought it was going to be a bigger deal than what it was. So, uh, one of the biggest things for me that stood out was the AJ Lee uh, promo she did when she won Diva of the Year. It really seemed like she was about to either do a full-on pipe bomb a la CM Punk and just go off on somebody or she was doing a goodbye because she was naming other divas that next year will be the diva of the year. Like, she's not going to be there. Like, she already knows. I think it's kind of a foregone conclusion at this point. But either way, she lost her nerve. And you could see that because she redirected and said, "Uh, but I'm the queen and I'm going to, you know, and you could tell – she lost her nerve, and she probably got something said to her about that after the uh, promo. If they're even still talking to her, like maybe they're just letting her go on autopilot. I don't know. The situation is so bizarre; uh, it's unprecedented, really. I mean, we've had other situations where you know, married couples and one not being in the company anymore. I mean, Maurice and Miz uh, uh, kind of comes to mind, even though they weren't married at the time. Now they are, and I guess it's still the. I guess it still is true, but it's not as public, and Maurice isn't doing other things, you know. So I don't know. I, I it, we've had situations that are kind of similar, but nothing quite like this. It's unique and it's very bizarre. It's very bizarre. I want to know what you guys think about that. Uh, Roman Reigns winning Superstar of the Year is a fucking travesty. It's a farce. It's it, oh, it's. It, it's an outrage. It really is. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to go full Cronin. Yes, Cronin, you've been turned into a verb. Uh, I don't want to go full Cronin on this. But part of me wants to rage because it's so fucking stupid. It makes no sense. There's only one guy who should have won uh, Superstar of the Year. There's not an argument for anyone else. It's Brock Lesnar. There is not. I know he hasn't been on TV much. I know that he's only had a few matches. But what he did... He did two things this year that made unquestioned. He broke the fucking streak, and that might have been enough on its own. But he also turned in the most dominating title victory in the history of wrestling. No, we have never seen an ass whooping quite like that, especially on a main guy. To see John Cena get his ass thoroughly whooped like that, frankly, still brings a fucking smile to my face. But it's just something you never see. So Brock Lesnar was the only guy. People can say, well, what about Daniel Bryan? Well, he didn't hold the title this year, and he he wasn't around that much if you really think about it. I mean, he just hasn't been around that much. And neither is Brock, but Brock's still champ, and so, you know, it kind of cancels itself out. Uh, Reigns has done absolutely nothing to deserve it. Cena, you can make a case for Cena, as always, like every year because they book him so strong. The interesting thing about that, and I got to touch on it a little bit last night, was originally Superstar of the Year, I'm almost 100% sure Dolph Ziggler was in that category. He was supposed to be up for it, and there was only seven guys that were up for it, and it should have been eight because Ziggler was supposed to be in there. I mean, he, he got in trouble for a tweet that he made about Superstar of the Year, and he made that little shot at John Cena, and all of a sudden... Boom, he's gone. So I think this tells you exactly where they are on Ziggler. And you know what? If he cost himself that and ultimately his push, then he should have fucking known better. I have no more sympathy because, yes, it wasn't a huge deal, but you have to know better at this point if you're Ziggler. You have to know better. There are no fucking, oh, you just said something harmless. No, no. You have to know your surroundings. Situational awareness. And you can't talk about Cena like that. Especially on social media. You can't fucking do it. It's not right, but we know the rules. And he knows the rules because he's been punished before. So if he cost himself something serious, and maybe none of this happened. I don't know. Maybe it didn't. But from what I'm seeing, it looks like it did. And we'll see if he cost himself his push. Because... That was just stupid. It was dumb. Neil, uh, last thing I want to talk about was the Ambrose appearing out of the smoky ambulance. One of the weirdest things I've ever fucking seen. Uh, 
you know, he's not a supernatural character. Bray Wyatt is. It's an Undertaker type thing. But Dean Ambrose, it, I, I, I think they've really lost sight of what made Dean Ambrose a fan favorite. And I think they're killing his character, quite frankly. Uh, they need to let him have a little more creative control. They need to say, here's, here's the stick. Run with it. Because he's done it in the past. His promos in the past where he just gets to be him in other uh, places that he's been other federations, other wrestling companies. He's he's gold. He knows what he's doing. So doing this PG fucking weird supernatural shit is just stupid. And him coming out of an ambulance like it's a fucking Prince video was bizarre. So uh, overall, I gave Raw four, maybe a five. Uh, I, I Oh, another quick thing, real quick. Tully Blanchard's daughter, you might have missed this. She was a rosebud last night. Tessa Blanchard. Tully Blanchard, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. I fucking love Tully Blanchard. My God. And his smoking hot, cute little daughter was on there. And that was kind of cool uh, to see. You know, we're seeing a lot of next generation superstars and divas coming into the to the mix. And it's more and more frequent. We're seeing it. Mick Foley had his daughter on again last night. Apparently, we're going to get more Mick Foley as Santa Claus right through Christmas, which I have no problems. I love Mick Foley and I love Santa Claus. So it's kind of cool, all of that stuff, and I like seeing the next generation of superstars, and having a pedigree is important. I mean, yeah, it does, sometimes it doesn't work out. You know, Kurt Henning's kid, <laughs> poor Curtis Axel, uh, Ted DiBiase, come, Ted DiBiase Jr. comes to mind. It, you know, it doesn't, uh, Davy Boy Smith's son, you know, so it doesn't always work out, but I think it helps a little bit in certain situations. And uh, it's good that she's at least getting a look at this point and talking about Teresa Blanchard. So, look, tell me what you guys thought of Raw. I know everyone is basically going to take a big fucking dump on it, and rightly so. We know what the Slammy Awards are usually are. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, guys. Like, subscribe, share as always. Tell me what you guys are thinking. Let me know what's going on in those crazy minds of you guys. By the way, also, thank you. You guys have got me to 162 subs already. Uh, and this channel's really only been going on for about a month and a half, and I really want to say thank you for all the support and the back and forth. The back and forth is so important to me. I try to respond to everybody who writes unless it's completely fucking retarded, but even then, I will try to respond to everybody, and I try to make you a part of it, because this is really your show. I, I am not a super talented guy. I can talk a little bit, but it's really... It's about us. It's about a community, and I try to make it like that. So I like to hear from you guys, and I appreciate it. So um, keep supporting, keep sharing, keep subscribing, all right? And I will be back tomorrow with your 5-Minute Focus.